Welcome in Braves Today. He is Kyle. I am Ben. Bravestoday.com is where you can find us. All brought to you by Active Wealth. Ronald Acuna Jr., one step away from so many things. Home runs, stolen bases, MVP, possibly one of the best Braves of our generation to ever put on the uniform behind probably, what, maybe Chipper Jones? So it should be interesting in the next week or two as we wrap up the season. As uh, Kyle, uh, Ronald Cunha Jr. won away, and he did so on bobblehead night for as, as far as home runs are concerned. Yeah, maybe they should have bobblehead night more often for him if he's going to hit two homers in the same <laughs> game. I would love for that, especially with how we've been performing these past few games. But Ronald, you know, one homer, three stolen bases away from a season that may never happen again in the history of Major League Baseball. Yeah, and uh, already at that 100 RBI mark as well. So, I mean, when you talk about a guy that's a leadoff guy that's still producing as far as RBIs is concerned, that's just unheard of to get into triple digits. Yeah, he's up there with Matt Olson as far as RBIs are concerned, and that's another guy that's been hitting it well here lately. Yeah, Olson just seems to uh, kind of found his rhythm again. I mean, I know everybody thinks home run, still the home run leader. Doesn't have to really worry about that right now with Otani out. Less than a week and a half left of baseball with a couple of series against Washington, series against Cubs. So unless somebody gets hot like Schwarber or something where he has a few three or four home run games, uh, more than likely he's probably going to end the season at that top spot. So, I mean, how big is that for the Braves? You got not only all stars like Acuna and Olsen, but you got league leaders in all categories. That's just fantastic as far as this team is concerned. Yeah, like it's been wrote about on our site, this could be the best offense in Braves history, at least maybe MLB history as far as numbers are concerned. And you mentioned Matt Olson in his last 15 games, he's hitting 400 and eight homers, 17 RBIs and 12 walks and only six strikeouts in the past 15 games. So that's the guy that's getting it done at the plate when we need him to the most. I keep saying it over and over. And I mean, I know it's it's like beating a dead horse, but Olson coming into the season, I said, give me a guy that's going to hit 260 have 30 home runs, and have probably 75, 80 RBIs, if that. And I would have been completely happy. So he's exceeded. He's even cut. You mentioned the one number that stuck out right there in my mind that you just mentioned, the strikeouts. Strikeout. And that was one of his big deals at the beginning. There was even a pod that Lindsey and I did where I even said that was our question. Who's going to have more strikeouts in the season, Matt Olson or Spencer Strider? Looks like Strider's going to be able to hold <laughs> hold that uh, hold that title. Well, that uh, when you put up generational strikeout numbers the way Spencer Strider is, then that's definitely a possibility. But you look at the uh, balls and you look at the based on balls and strikeout numbers for this year, he's walked 99 times. That's the most walks he has had in one season in his career. No matter what team he's been with, he's got 158 strikeouts so far as well. So still a little high on that, but lower than last year mm. and a lot more walks than last year and hitting 279, 26 doubles, you know, not Freddie Freeman numbers, three triples, which is the most he's ever had, 52 homers, 130 RBIs. I mean, he's getting it done. Yeah, 52 homers. He could probably get to 55 before it's all said and done with. Uh, it looks like, I mean, with especially with the teams that uh, the Braves have on the list. I mean, the Nats pretty much have kind of mailed it in for the year. Cubs are still fighting, but who knows how well the Braves will play against them. It's always hit or miss whenever they face the Cubbies, so we shall see. Uh, mention Strider and mention his strikeouts. Uh, he put a stop to that losing streak, and this is the Strider that the Braves needed down the stretch. Ended up with 11 Ks before the night was over with. We needed somebody to do something on the mound. I was talking to Crosby last night, and it's like, we need to do a run dance, a pitching dance, something like people used to do rain dance, because we had something had to give. You know, we had to stop that losing skid. We haven't lost five games in a row since 2017, and thankful, thankfully, that didn't happen tonight. You know, that was one thing. That was kind of going around. It was in the Discord. It went around on Twitter. Uh, five in a row since 2017. The last pod that we did, I told Lindsay, I'd completely forgotten that we even got swept twice in the first half. I remembered the one sweep. I did not remember the second sweep, uh, both against American League teams. So the Marlins still the only National League team to sweep the Braves uh, after the Braves get the win in game two against the Phillies with the rubber game of the series coming up. Uh, they avoid that bad record because that's one you don't – we keep talking about all the good records the Braves have. Sitting that as losing five in a row since 2017, I think the team 
I don't want to say it was Ronnie that started it off with the leadoff home run, but it just seemed like they played a little differently, almost like they had a little meeting in the clubhouse that said something like, all right, boys, like we get, we've won the division. We're in there. If we want home field, we can't keep quote the, uh, the, the Durham bulls from uh, the movie bull Durham can't keep lollygagging. Yeah. Yeah. I think the uh, leadoff homer from Ronnie was the shot in the arm that the team really needed tonight. We've said before, as Ronnie goes, the rest of the team goes. Yeah. Uh, had another stolen base, a couple of home runs. So still moving the needle on those numbers. And it seems like when he does that, Ozzy's right behind him. He hits the ball a little bit better. Olsen gets better pitches to see. They had some control issues, did Philly, as they put a few walks up there. The Braves able to capitalize by then Ozuna, who, you know, at the first of the year, I was preaching get rid of Ozuna, and now he seems to be one of the spark plugs that comes up in, you know, late in the innings or or late in the lineup and actually produces for the Braves. Yeah, that's the guy that I actually pulled up over here on the stat sheet. In his last seven games, he's hitting 333, two homers, seven RBIs. So he's getting it done here lately. And I mean, he's hitting 269 this year. He had that average all the way up to a 272 at the start of September, but it's gone down just a little bit. But he's still hitting over 200 in still. this month. And you mentioned the Marlins and records winning and loss records against teams. It's crazy we got swept by the Marlins because that's the team that we're usually the best against. We were nine yeah. and one against the Marlins heading into that series. I know. We completely had owned the Marlins leading up to that. And that was honestly. You just talked about a shot in the arm as far as Acuna is concerned. I think that was a shot in the arm to the Marlins. I think now we've given them hope that they could possibly jump up there and maybe catch somebody if they end up winning out or they have a you know a great end of the season. They're gonna. I think Father Time's going to catch them. I just think the end of the season is going to catch them before they're able to make a move uh, and jump up into, into the wild card contention. But uh, that, that sweep definitely helped as far as the Braves are concerned. Before we move on, let me give a quick shout-out to our, our, our big buddy Ford, Ford Stokes from Active Wealth. Active Wealth Show on AM920 and The Answer, as well as author of Informative Book Annuity 360, primary sponsor here. Best part, Ford's going to give you and each and every Brave fan a free gift, a book Annuity 360. All you need to do is go to annuity360.net, provide you with contact information there, and then Ford's going to send you that complimentary copy. It's important to note Ford and his team at Active Wealth specialize in assisting pre-retirees and retirees, and his team are eager to assist you and make the most of your financial resources. Active Wealth Management has conveniently located offices in Alpharetta, Cartersville, Kennesaw, Midtown. They also recently opened up their new headquarters off of Exit 12 off of Georgia 400. Let them know that we at Braves today sent you in that direction and tell Ford, go Braves and chop on. As uh, we talked about uh, what they have left, it looks like, I mean, you still got to finish things with the Phillies, but then after that, the Nationals, which the Braves have tended, had this year have at least, uh, have kind of licked their chops whenever they faced them. And it looks like we'll even see Max Freed on the mound. It looks like that blister may have healed up or at least is headed in the right direction. Yeah, I hope so. Max Freed, a guy we're going to need down the road for sure. That's an ace pitcher that you need to have if you want to go to a World Series. And he's had problems with these kind of things for his whole career, it seems like. Mm -hmm. He's had blister issues for a while now. And I just hope that we've given him time having the start off to kind of get that nipped in the bud before he faces the nationals. It, 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 another reason, and that was the last pod that we did where I said, is it time to panic? It, and I, I tell Braves, you shouldn't panic right now because speaking of pitching, getting Kyle Wright more involved and in trying to get him some innings, calling up Schuster to let him get some innings. The Braves aren't exactly throwing aces out there every day, moving freed for precautionary reasons from, you know, a start that he should have had against the Phillies to moving him to the Nationals. Just they said he could have gone. If this would have been the playoffs, he would have been on the mound. However, why not give it an extra week to kind of either scab over or go down something so he'll uh, have a little bit more. You know, it, it wouldn't be as painful with him on the mound uh, if, if they give him that chance to wait. So that's one thing I've seen a lot in the comments and in the in, in the Twitterverse and people that have DM'd us and that kind of thing. And you know, they're they're concerned and they're like, what about our pitching? And it's like, well, we haven't really put the full rotation in effect yet. And, you know, when playoffs roll around, you heard Tom Glavin talk about it when we potted with him. It'll turn into a three man rotation. So you'll yep. have two extra guys that will be starters that can be middle relief. If a guy gets in trouble in the first inning, you've got another starter that can come in right behind him and act like he just started the game an inning late. And right now you've technically got three guys. You've got Charlie Morton, Max Freed, and then you've got 
uh, Bryce Elder. Mm -hmm. You've already got three guys. And, you know, we talk about Kyle Wright, and he has not looked good. He's 0-3. Didn't look good the other day, but we're talking about a guy that really didn't even have a spring, so he's still trying to get, like, Grapefruit League-type mm. innings in here late in the season. He's still trying to get right at the end of the season. He's he's still working on that. Schuster's a guy we won't see again because he's out mm. of options, so yep. the only way we'd bring him back is if he would pass through waivers, and that's not a guy that's going to pass through waivers. Yeah. So we won't see him again, but he was serviceable for what we had. Yeah. And like you said, we, we just been kind of throwing arms out there and seeing what would stick so far. And keep, keep in mind when it comes to right, I don't see him being a starter as far as the playoffs are concerned. I think he'll be a guy that's more of a, a help, a reliever, give me three innings. And you mentioned him basically starting spring right now. Not just that in his rehab assignments, they never let him really go over 50 pitches. Yeah. And even when he did, he did his 50 or 60 in the game, and then they sent him down to do 40 more in the bullpen. And that's just not the same as facing live hitting. We know that. He and only so, threw about three innings in each game, yeah. if that. Yeah, if that. And so uh, he's finally trying to get back in the swing of things. And honestly, <laughs> not that you're setting him up for failure, but I don't know that the Phillies are the team that you bring him up to face. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's not the one. <laughs> as far as making your debut is concerned. And it's not necessarily his debut because he pitched last year. But as far as this year is concerned, it is. He's faced the Phillies twice, and they've touched him up and roughed him up pretty hard. And, and that's to be expected with just about anybody that pitched. You can't make mistakes against the Phillies. Even Strider, as well as he was pitching, 11 strikeouts. He still had a couple of bombs that he gave up and gave up some hard-hit balls because the Phillies are still going to put the ball in play. He only had – Strider ha only had one hit and one walk going into the sixth inning, and then you have Bryce Harper hit a three-run homer. But that's mm -hmm. just the way the Phillies operate. They're just like the Braves, which is what makes them dangerous. Anybody in that lineup can just come up and hit a bomb and shock the world at any time. Uh, coming up, uh, any sort of articles or anything you guys are going to be working on as far as Braves today that they can catch is, and uh, do a deep dive as far as going to bravestoday.com? Yeah, I just posted one today on this uh, wild card race we have going on. I know you mentioned the Marlins and how they may run out of time. They're tied right now for a wild card spot with the Cubs, but the Cubs currently in the lead. They're playing against the Pirates. They're up 5-1. Brewers, they're leading the NL Central right now. They're, they're beating the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. But the Brewers, with the way their schedule comes out, them, the Cubs, and the Reds, all three of those teams have a chance at all getting in in some form or fashion, which the Reds lost to the Twins 7 to nothing today, so that didn't help. But mm. the Marlins beating the Mets definitely helped them. The Diamondbacks, another team in that wild card race, they're beating the Giants 5-2 to two right now, and that's the other two teams that mm -hmm. is mentioned when we talk about the wild card races. Arizona's in. They're a half game ahead. If they beat San Fran, they'll be a whole game ahead in the wild card, and San Francisco would be three games back at that point. Yeah, it's uh, all dangerous teams as they, they've played the Braves tough all year. Uh, it's funny because there's some of the teams that I, you, you kind of wonder if you want to face them, but then you also wonder, well, we got them early in the season. Will we get them the next time around if we have to face them again? Uh, we've talked about now the number one goal for the Braves is just continue. You don't have to sweep series. You don't even necessarily have to win series, but you do have to stay. You, you mentioned four and a half. I guess five because the Dodgers haven't finished yet. So five up probably on the Dodgers as far as uh, the best record in the National League and having home field advantage. Best record in baseball. Still looking to possibly outpace the Orioles who are also at nipping at the heels. Yeah, and the Orioles up nine to five on the Astros in the seventh inning right now. And the Dodgers playing the Tigers tonight. Tigers are up 1-0, but the Dodgers have bases loaded in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah. And I would expect the Dodgers to win that game against the Tigers. Uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. four games ahead of them. You're still trying to get home field advantage throughout the NL playoffs. And mm -hmm. then the Orioles nipping at your heels for overall best record in baseball. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, Braves still got a little more wood to chop as they will wrap the series up against the Phillies, as well as then it's the Nats, then it's the Cubs, then it's the Nats again. And then we'll see how it all shakes out. Hopefully it'll shake out a lot quicker than we think so we can see some guys get some rest in that last series against the Washington Nationals as we end the regular season and head into the playoffs. He's Kyle. I'm Ben. Braves today. Bravestoday.com. Follow us on Twitter at Braves underscore today. Thanks, bud. Yeah, man. No problem.